I rise to uh, add the Nationals' position to this uh, MPI. And uh, as members would be aware, this was a hotly contested issue in the Central Wheat Belt during the uh, run-up to the state election. And I heard this rubbish peddled again and again and again, every day in my electorate from the opposition about grain on rail. And it's just absolutely and complete. It is crystal, cli crystal clear to me it is crystal clear to me and from your display today in this House that you have no understanding of this issue. None whatsoever. None members. whatsoever. I, on the other hand, I, right. on the other hand. Right, Member for Mansra, Member for Central Wheat Belt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, on the other hand, spent nearly every day of the election campaign dealing with this issue, and I do have an intimate understanding of this issue because I spend most of my time driving on these roads and dealing with my constituents, who are mostly farmers, uh, and I spend a lot of time talking with CBH and Brookfields about how we can make sure we have an effective grain freight network that delivers the outcomes that our growers want and the community's concerns around safety. Our stated position going into the state election was that we supported the uh, retention of as much grain on rail as possible. We stated that again and again and our position since the election has remained the same. The emotion that comes into this debate, and there's no shortage of it, overlooks the fact that there are some facts that have been laid out by the Treasurer today around the economic realities um, that have to come into play here. We have to deal with the facts. And of course, when people are asked, of course when people are asked, would you prefer to have grain on rail as opposed to roads, they're going to say rail. Absolutely. But one of the examples that's been provided today already is that whereas there's been perfectly good rail in operation and open and been available for use, I've had calls into my office again and again from shires and community members saying we're really worried about the number of trucks out loading from the CBH bin uh, and uh, what are you going to do about it? Closing the rails. We're closing the rails. Well, there's not. There was a rail line in operation and CBH were making an economic choice to utilise the road because the way that our grain is shifted around the state has changed. Over the last hundred years, since the rail has been built, we've, sh we've changed. Farmers have made advancements in technology and that goes, for the same, that goes the same for the transport. So what we have to understand now is that industry has significantly changed and this impacts on how farmers and CBH and other stakeholders transport their grain to port. Since deregulation, well, deregulation was probably the key change in this factor, and uh, the changes that uh, the way that we market our wheat at uh, the Lost Bay AWB. And in 2009, the state government commenced a review. The treasurer spoke about that because we needed to have a look at the most effective way to make sure we were we, we had an effective grain freight network. Off the back of that report, and there were a number of stakeholders invo involved in that report, um, key industry stakeholders, primarily the users of said rail. There was a $350 million state and federal government investment into rail, where CBH stated that they would be utilising it, and into road, where they were saying that uh, they weren't viable going into the future. Since that report, and the Treasurer is quite right, CBH made an investment into uh, some new rolling stock, new locos, and, and, uh, and, it's, um, and they also entered into an arrangement with Watco. Now, Watco, for those members that aren't aware, have uh, good experience in the United States of running on lines that are similar to the Tier 3 lines. So um, they have a new, they entered into an entirely new business relationship. And in light of that, since that report, the National said, right, let's go back and actually have a look and, and do an audit of the infrastructure that's been involved. So that was the position that we took to the state election. Let's go back and have a look at whether or not this is a game changer that requires us to to revisit our decision around Tier 3. There was also a $75 million infrastructure fund contained in the $300 million agriculture policy and we, con and we committed to the audit. So that work is being done at the moment. We're, we're working through rolling out the ag policy. The audit will come. And what I would urge CBH and Brookfields to do is to make sure that we've got the information that we need to make decisions in front of us about what their intentions are for the rail going forward. Because what concerns me is that the, in the intervening period uh, excuse between— Excuse me, Member. There's too much conversation going in the House. Could you keep it quiet or leave that uh, chamber, please? Thank you, Member. Thank you. What concerns me is that in the seven or eight months since the state election, 
My understanding is that CBH has not been back and Brookfields has not been back to government with a plan on what they would like to do with those tier three lines. Are they going to use them? Because from my perspective, it's completely irresponsible of us and for you to be promoting the use of hard-earned taxpayers' dollars into a line that CBH will not use. And they will not use. It is unreasonable. It is completely, it is completely unreasonable. And we don't resolve. We do not resolve from the commitment. We do not resolve from the commitment that we made that we we support the retention of as much grain on rail as possible. But there's no point. There is no point, Members. member. There is no point in government investing in a line that the user of the line, the only user of the line, will not utilise. Because then we put all our taxpayers' dollars into a line and the road next to it, which will be used, will crumble and fall apart and there will be safety issues for the community. There will be safety issues for the community. They have not. They haven't been, so CBH, the only user of the line, has not been back to government to tell us what they want to do with the lines going forward since they've made this investment in their rolling stock and their locos. And I guess my concern in this, and, and, we've, and, and the voters backed us, they, they backed me in the central wheat belt and we had a sensible position, unlike you, who promoted, promoted unreasonable expectations absolutely emotive, ridiculous statements right through the election, right through the election, and no one believed you. Not one person believed you. And you haven't been back since. Have not been back since. Haven't seen hide nor hair of you. You cared so much about it that you decided you wouldn't talk about it until now. Absolutely not. Can I read you? Can I? Just to back up, can I? Members. Can I? Just to back up the statement that I said that that uh, CBH Member and Brookfield needs to make their case to government on the member. Ooh, I can't. I don't have the date. Sorry, I'll provide that to. Uh, but it was it was last week when when Paul Larson from Brookfield when member for member? West Swan. Paul Larson, when he made the announcement that, they, that Brookfields had made the decision to close the training Meriden line, by, which, by the way, had no grain carried on it in the last harvest, so there won't be any impact other different to, to last year to this year, none. So do your research before you stand up and talk about truck movements. 78,000 tonne on the York Querreting line. Mr Larson said it would now be incumbent on Brookfield and CBH to convince the government that maybe it should reconsider its decision not to offer funding to Tier 3 lines. But government doesn't have anything from us yet. Quite rightfully, they would ask that the proposal be something that CBH and Brookfield Rail both agree to. It doesn't want two different proposals. It wants one proposal, and CBH, CEO Andy Crane and I have agreed to work on one together. They're actually saying that. The, the industry that is using the lines is saying that it is incumbent on them to come back to government to put the case for us to make an investment. And off the back of that, we went to an election saying we've put $75 million into an infrastructure fund and we'll do an audit when we've got the information from industry to make a decision about whether we invest going forward. Stop peddling the emotive, irrational arguments of people that don't know anything about this industry. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So I'm putting on record today, just in the short period that I've got, that I do think there's a need for some greater transparency about us understanding what's in the lease terms, um, and and that has caused angst in the community about us not understanding fully, and the community not understanding about what's I'm putting on the record in the parliament. And I and I would also say that in the interim of us having any information, we've got on and done what every stakeholder asked us to do which Member was to invest in tier, tier 1 and Tier 2 lines and upgraded the lines. And in the absence of uh, any information for government to consider, that's what exactly Thank what we've you, done. Member.